So because this extreme redshift is a huge factor in the story of quasars, I want to um, jump back to the idea of redshift. Uh, we've seen this equation before, right? This is what we've used in the Doppler shift equation. Redshift in general, we denote with the letter Z. And it's just the difference in wavelengths between some unshifted rest wavelength, lambda naught, and a shifted wavelength, which we call lambda prime, divided by the unshifted wavelength. We used this to calculate, for example, the speed of an object. Um, so for this redshift equation, what would you say is true about um, how this equation should play out in the case of a redshift? Okay. Oh, okay. The majority of you are saying greater than zero. Um, yeah, so you're saying if we're going from a shorter wavelength to a longer wavelength, that's a redshift, it's being stretched. So then this number is always going to be greater than lambda naught. So this always has to be positive as a result. Yeah, so that's, that's right. So it has, to be, it has to be greater than zero. And the reason is because lambda prime is always longer. This is just the opposite of a blue shift, right? If I had asked you what was true of a blue shift, it would be the opposite answer. Then it would always be shorter wavelength. And so it would be less than zero. All right, so um, let's actually put this into practice. You've done this kind of calculation before. So take a minute and um, type your answer into the chat. Don't hit send yet. But let's say that your hydrogen line is normally at 656 nanometers and you measure it from a source and it, that line has shifted to 763 nanometers. So what is the redshift Z? Okay, yeah. So 0.16, right. Let me away in my drawings. All right, so yeah, if I put um, 763, the shifted wavelength, and then 656 nanometers is my rest wavelength, divide that by the rest wavelength, then I get 0.16. So that's the redshift here. All right, so we can use the redshift, like I said, to find the speed of some object, and that's what we did way back when we talked about Doppler shift. So this again is the Doppler shift equation. Um, this entire piece here inside the parentheses is just our redshift, right? So Doppler shift equation V is equal to the speed of light times the redshift. Um, in the case of a Doppler shift, this doesn't have to be a redshift, right? It could be a blue shift, um, but because we're talking about the redshift of quasars, um, this, well, and because Hubble's law shows us that uh, almost all galaxies are redshifted, then redshift is the you know, it's the number that we use to communicate the velocity of an object. Okay, so this is the same expression, right? So as you can see, it's useful shorthand to replace this entire piece with redshift. So astronomers will use redshift and it sounds very jargony, right? Uh, but it's, it's simple, it just means the wavelength shift divided by the rest wavelength. But it's important to remember where this comes from, right? This comes from uh, measuring a spectrum and then calculating the shift from the spectrum. All right, so if I try to calculate the speed of an object with redshift 0.16 that we just measured, and so I multiply that 0.16 by the speed of light, then what this means is that the redshift tells me what percentage of the speed of light my object is moving, right? So the fraction 0.16, that means 16%. So 16% of the speed of light, that's pretty fast. So we were you know, even more puzzled than before as to what red our quasars could be based on this redshift. Okay, let's say we have a hydrogen line. Now we're gonna use a different line. This is a purple hydrogen line. So I'll, this is a 410 nanometer line and we measure it to be redshifted to 1640 nanometers. Now calculate for me, what fraction of the speed of light is our light source moving? All right, if you've had time to calculate, go ahead and let me know. All right, yeah, so I'm seeing a lot of three, 300%, right. So that doesn't seem good, right? So if we have our redshift equation, 
and we actually apply the numbers given, we get three. And yeah, that's going to be 300% the speed of light. But the speed of light is supposed to be a cosmic speed limit, right? Nothing is supposed to go faster than light. So how is it possible for an object to be going three times as fast as the speed of light? Sometimes if you actually do measure spectra um, that are highly redshifted, you will end up with this result, a faster than speed of light result. Don't worry, it doesn't mean that the object is actually moving faster than the speed of light. Um, it just means that this idea, uh, this particular equation for Doppler shift only applies at low speeds. So it only applies at redshifts less than about 0.1. And for objects faster than a redshift of about 0.1, this linear relationship we see here in the bottom corner. So here's what I mean here. This relation between the velocity and the speed, or sorry, the redshift it becomes less and less linear and it looks more like a curve and then it eventually saturates at one, right? So um, this area, when the redshift is less than 0.1, there this equation applies, but above we have to have a different equation that takes into account the effects of relativity. So I'm not gonna get into it, but actually your book does talk about it. Um, so we can use um, tables or online calculators to calculate the speeds of objects with larger redshifts than 0.1. All right, so here's one of those tables. And so here's you know, the redshift in the first column versus the fraction of C, so that's V over C. And these should be the same for redshifts that are low enough that that relationship still makes sense. So here, it's good to 0.025 here, um, but then it starts to deviate a little bit once we get uh, to about 0.05. And by 0.1, it's deviating more and more. And in fact, the error becomes um, quite large. You can see at very high redshift. All right, so here was our redshift of three for our um, object that could be moving at 300 times or 300% the speed of light. But don't worry, it in fact is only moving at 88% the speed of light. That's still pretty fast, um, but it's, it doesn't violate any rules of physics this way. All right, so I'm not telling you this to try to confuse you, but to try to help you make sense of tables like this that we'll come across.